I know you're a great poetry reader, but is this a new departure, reading stories for children on television? Yes, it's the first time I've done it at all. I was terrified, really. Why? No, because it was a new uh, phase of work for mm. me. And I think television is always rather terrifying, you know. Uh, Beatrix Potter isn't terrifying. No, she's the most friendly person. But it was terrifying in the sense that I wanted most earnestly to do her some justice. And so I was extra nervous, you see. I take it you're a great admirer of her stories, then? Yes. Oh, yes, I am. But this particular um, job has led me to know them much better and to know her wonderful pictures, too. As a child, I didn't seem to be very aware of her, I'm afraid. I was too old, I suppose, for childhood, you know, then. Mm. And, uh, but now I come to know the full value. The older they get, they get, the more vintage they get, the richer, I think. Um, it's lovely to think that, isn't it? That she's still held in our hearts. Indeed. Like that. Of course, with your husband, Stringer Davis, you're known, well known now, apart from your separate acting careers, as readers of poetry in public, something that's considered rather old-fashioned nowadays, and yet you read to all kinds of audiences. Because my first challenge to do anything like that when I was grown up came from my friend, Mr. John Carroll, who happens to be in the studio here, as we've told you. And um, he was persistent in trying to get hold of me, and it was particularly difficult at the time. And it was from that moment when we were associated that my uh, regular poetry reading began. You've taken the exceptionally extraordinary step of reading poems to prisoners in Her Majesty's jails. What kind of poetry did they like? Well, the poetry that I'm accustomed to reading. I didn't mm. make any special... Uh, arrangement. Again, uh, Johnny, as I call him, arranged the program. And um, I've never known a more wonderful audience. Never. Except possibly at Winchester School last Sunday. I couldn't believe that the boys would give us mm. such a reception. Mm. It was most heartwarming. I know you have said that you detest, if that's not too strong a word, the yeah. myth of your eccentricity including, I suppose, the kind of public image people have of you from films is... Well, it's fairly far-ranging now, but you're... At one time, you were thought of as a lovable old battle axe. Are you resigned to this kind of publicity? I'm not altogether resigned to the battle axe. Mm. I don't being, be, mind being, being thought of as lovable. Yes. But um, I don't be, mind being thought eccentric because um, I like to be a person by myself, you know, with my own kind of ways. I don't, I mustn't say distinctive, but a little bit odd, I don't mind being. <laughs> I think that a lot of things that were in the 20s that were regarded as eccentric, <laughs> such as reading poetry to prisoners, Yes. Can you imagine anything more delicious <coughs> and do good than that? But now, she did them then. When even she was making fun of it, she did it with such a sense of enjoyment and sincerity that it was no longer ridiculous and people rather wished that they could do it themselves. And so now the prisoners still write and ask for my wife to go back and read them poetry again because they liked it. Your films, Miss Rutherford, on a, on a different tack, have always been popular here. Lately, they've been enormously successful in America. Why do you think Americans like you? Well, I, I always very much wonder why people like me, actually. And I'm very glad if they do. I'm extremely grateful to America uh, for all the affection they offer me. I, I can only say that it's... Uh, uh, what's the word I was? <laughs> Reciprocal. Mm. I, I like Americans. I love Americans. Many of them, really. They are so forthright and warm-hearted. Is it difficult, Miss Rutherford, being married to an actor? Perhaps I should ask Stringer Davis that. Who are you going to ask? 
I'll, I'll ask your husband. No, I don't think so. I, I, I've been a supporting actor all my working life since 1920, and I really didn't see why I shouldn't support a star off stage as well as on stage. And my side of that question is that without this particular support, I couldn't have done what I have done. So for me, it's a sine qua non mm. to have him at my side. Are you interested in young people and in new developments, new fashions? Oh, yes, very. Hmm. I'm very envious, really, of all the young people, not only because of all the wonderful chances that are given to them for living their lives thoroughly, uh, but, but because of their temperaments. They seem to me so courageous and ready for anything. And. Uh, they're, they seem so honest to me in their outlook. They must have honesty and truth, which is the only way anyone will get, get anywhere, isn't it? Indeed.